This Buffalo Bills preview edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Circus Sports. Circus Sports is giving away $14 million this NFL season. Sign up in Vegas and play from anywhere. Get all the info over at circusports.com. We're also brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app to get last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Use promo code SGPN for $20 off. We're also brought to you by our Patreon. Score exclusive perks, content, and contests, including including our NFL win totals contest with the thousand dollar prize. Join today at sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon. Ooh, welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog, you're very jacked up for the Buffalo Bills. Nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I do. Uh, I've always had a um, you know brief little love affair. I, I think because I lived in upstate New York, talking about a guy who lived uh, up at the Rome Air Force Base site of the Woodstock Two uh, debacle. So again, I like uh, Buffalo. I like upstate New York. I like their approach to life. I like their passion for the game. You like horse flies? Horse flies? No. They got big horse flies. Yeah, and yeah. crazy snow. Yeah. I, I I like I like the uh, I like blue cheese. I like wings. I like Labatt Blue. There, there's a lot I like about the Buffalo Bills. Again, you got, you got a you got some stock in a table constructing company. <laughs> that was uh, I do remember last year where someone tweeted out it was back when the Eagles and the Bills were uh, both doing really well. Uh, if the Eagles and the Bills make it to the Super Bowl, I don't know if our country has the infrastructure to support that. Uh, because it was really, it was, it was, um, it was what, uh, by infrastructure mean plumbing. No, I just, <laughs> it, it would go nuts. And I do hope one day that uh Buffalo Bills fan base gets their super bowl. All that being said, Oh, can you imagine a Buffalo fan base coming to like <laughs> hoity toity Miami or LA? Like think of all the toilets. They're uh, going to get clogged. I mean, dude, think of all those toilets. The, the super bowl is in Las Vegas. If bills mafia oh. descends on Las Vegas mm, respect, uh, they, they, they got toilets that can handle some <laughs> shit. That's true. They got some power. I, I just, I just, pr- I mean, Derek's uh, Derek's place might get overrun. <laughs> Good guy scale in the wall over at Stadium Swim. It would be, it, it, as a, a, you know, I I do like the Bills overall. I I like the fan oh, base, the nice organization. That being said. I don't know. There's some, there's some uh, possible bad juju working its way through oh. this team, Ryan. That, that that I am genuinely concerned about. Yeah, are we talking deep fakes? Are we talking about uh, well, rep- reptilian not, uh, clones? Is Demar Hamlin real? We'll get to that. Oh wow! We got a yes. s- special guest, managing editor, uh, SportsGivenPodcast.com. Bills super fan Adam Peltier <laughs> joining us later on. I know Patrick Fisher, Bills Mafia DJ, a oh, no. lot of people of uh, firing in the uh, YouTube chat. Uh, make sure you subscribe. And speaking of subscribe, I looked at the number 31% of the people who are watching these team previews oh, again, completely do it, free Hold are, not, back. are not subscribed to the sports gambling podcast, YouTube channel. What do you, those are numbers that corporate gambling is just frothing at the mouth. Loving it. Do your part subscribe and then head over to sports gambling podcast.com slash Patreon smash that uh, Patreon uh, subscription as well. Uh, got a uh, fun new announcement coming for the Patreons later on in the week. And of course, we got the weekly Patreon pick them, the season long NFL win totals contest, thousand dollar up for grabs, an awesome uh, prize for NFL Week One. Stay tuned for that. But plenty of stuff going on over on the Patreon. So much to get to, Ryan. So much to get to. Bills season, uh, real quick, 2022. 14 and four straight up. Of course, uh, what were they? 13 and three, technically going into the uh, into the playoffs. Now give I, a tie. Yeah. Well, no, we didn't grade that as a tie. I do. I and we'll see if Adam agrees. <clears throat> what do you mean? It's a tie. 
It's no contest. No, they never. It was never. Um, I understand. Oh, okay. didn't happen. Didn't happen. Eight nine and one ATS. Another deep fake. Not a great uh, ATS record. Eleven and five was the win total. You had them going twelve and five. I had them going thirteen and four. Full. I. I my. My bad. Yeah. Full jinx. <laughs> I knew it. My theory. My. My. My crazy theory about Josh Allen's brain walking mm. out the door with Brian Dable. Crazy theory. Well, again, they're much like the uh much like the Ravens, a very good regular season team, haven't been able to put it together in the playoffs. Maybe that changes this year, maybe it doesn't. I mean, they C- were closer dominant. parallels than that too. The similar defensive problems. Bills horrendous on third and fourth down, amazing on first and second down. Crazy. And and one of those losses was that uh Minnesota Vikings game, which was one of the craziest uh Josh ways, Allen. ways to lose a game. And then again, Ryan, we you keep joking about a, a dome team, and I think it was Isaiah McKenzie was on a podcast talking trash, like, oh, we were sliding all over that field. You're you're the Bills. You can't you can't complain about the snow in Buffalo. He was saying, Oh, if it was in a dome, things would be different. You're going up against Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I know you have Stefan Diggs, who was frustrated in that game, frustrated coming into the season, still haven't gotten an answer what, to Stefan Diggs' frustrations. What what, what what happened where? What team is Isaiah McKenzie on now? Not the Bills. <laughs> That's true. Talking shit. Like sands through the hourglass, so are the days of our league. What happened to Josh Allen going into that Bengals game? Something wasn't right. Something was amiss. Will him and Stefan go back to being best friends? Have they said they love each other? We won't even know that answer, Ryan. Stay tuned. Bills 2023 season coming up. Remember when Steve Urkel became Stefan or cow <laughs> to be cooler. Is there, is there some that, machine Stefan Diggs is well, going to go into? That's why he's not Steve Diggs. He's Stefan Diggs Cause he wanted to be cooler. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I look, I, obviously there was some drama again, much like we discussed in the Baltimore preview. I think for the most part, we're probably over, especially you, you love your tabloids. You're probably over valuing things that you read in them. And so I think from what I can tell, listening to interviews and, and watching body language, Josh and uh, Stefan are, are bros. And I think they're, they're, they're tighter than whatever. I don't want to say skanky, but whatever skanky Northern New York whore tried to get between (laughs) Josh and and Steph, but they, they, they ironed it out. Mm. Maybe they ironed it out over a threesome. Mm. Maybe it was a wobbly age, some, some hot. It was a wobbly H with a handshake. It was a serious <laughs> one. Maybe a bro hug wobbly H. That's actually probably what how they how they mend all fences in Buffalo. Mm. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, uh, I, mean, I mean, again, uh, back to last year. I mean, Sean, th- this is another one where, it, you know, I don't think you meant to to draw so many parallels, but Josh Allen, you know, maybe there's an issue with the elbow. Maybe that's leading to some of their lack of success, much like the Ravens. Again, you can just you can keep playing these hits. They were really good against bad defense or bad teams. Yeah. And they weren't quite as good against really good teams. Well, and we haven't even gotten to Josh Allen. I was gonna want to give out Josh Allen mo- to lead the league in interception, but it's chalk. He is the favorite to lead the league in interceptions at only 10 to 1. He had 14 last year in the regular season, three interceptions in the playoffs. I mean, if he gets that extra game, maybe he uh, gives Dak the run for his money. If they finish that Bengals game, it's worse than that. He 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 led the league in in, in red zone interceptions with nine. Yeah, and fourth in the league in dropped interceptions with twelve. Yeah, I, right. Whoa. Yeah, I mean turnover Whoa. turnover worthy plays for a guy who is as good as Josh Allen. It's almost like going back to the early Josh Allen, where it was a wild ride, good and bad. You didn't know what you were going to get with Josh Allen. You know what? You do know what you're going to get when it comes to getting great last minute tickets. That's of course game time. Have you downloaded the game time app? Have you signed up? Got that account going? You can't be ready for the season if you haven't set up your game time account. Again, uh, set up that game time account. Use the promo code SGPN. Twenty dollars off. Love a little uh, little free cash there. A little twenty dollars off. I am so stoked. Just got my game time uh, app downloaded. Got the game time login ready to go. Game time.co. Cannot wait 
to get my Philadelphia Eagles at the LA Rams tickets. Again, uh, Bills Mafia, they are just I'm sure they're chomping at the bit because they are a team that shows up on these road spots. They actually go to Philly. That'll be a great fan base. They're flying over to uh, London to play the London Jags. That's going to be an awesome t- opportunity for a Bills. I mean, unleashing the city of Buffalo on uh, England. I mean, again, they haven't seen that kind of intensity since uh, 1776. I was going to say the, the ultimate revenge spot, uh, sending the colony. <laughs> the, basically Buffalo is the colonist. Yeah, send I them mean, back. you, you're, uh, you know, England is lucky. They don't value uh, folding tables over there because it would be, I mean, it would be the folding table tea oh. party. Just bills fans going nuts over there in England. Again, game time is where it's at. Download the game time app, create an account, use the pro promo code SGPM for $20 off your first purchase terms apply again, create that account. Use the code SGPM for $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Ryan, do we, I feel like we're Chad is lit, Sean. I, I feel like this is just waterboarding uh, for our uh, yeah, guests. Let's get him on we got to bring him on joining us here on the line. You know him as Van Gene Enter over at sportsgamingpodcast.com. Bill Superfan, Mr. Adam Pelletier. What's happening, Adam? I didn't know Sean and Kramer I didn't know stayed Sean behind and Kramer in Ohio. Stayed behind in and <laughs> left me with these two cowards. Invasion oh. of the body snatchers, <laughs> leaving the guest in the warm room, just saying, No, you can't come out. You can't say anything. You're just going to sit there and listen to needless slander. What is this? When, when I'm hurt, I'm hurt. Guys. I really <laughs> am. Well, I, and I will say, I, I don't, there might've been some audio problems at the top of the video, but I, if you're listening to the podcast, you would have heard the Miz mm. uh, open the show for us. And it was to pay homage to the, the, the greatest promo cutter on the uh, SGP and airwaves, Adam Pelletier. Yes. Adam neck and neck. We, we can't, we can't have a productive entertaining bills episode without a (laughs) heel. Now, can we, we got, we got to fire you up a little bit. I mean, that's just what it's been. Just keeping me in the back. You know, I don't even, I'm not even in the studio, so I don't get the perks of the green room. I'm over here just being gassed up, just (laughs) listening to this Josh Allen slander, listening to this bills slander, listening to you guys just Hype up to a tag of Viola when the oh, Dolphins no. fan isn't even confident in the Dolphins <laughs> to win the division. You gave out Dolph- Josh, pl- Josh, play the clip. Josh, I hope you cut the clip for me. I asked you to cut it. <laughs> oh, wow. going He's through producing the, the show, too. They're going through the Dolphins bets. Re listen to the Dolphins podcast, folks. If Josh doesn't have a clip, they're going through the Dolphins bets. Sean and Kramer go, Oh, Dolphins to win the division. Love it. And what does Big Rob? Dolphins super fan do big Rob goes, you know what? I actually like dolphins to make the playoff at worse odds. <laughs> that's true. That was kind of cowardly. That w- I, well, that's not uh, first of I mean, all, I got, and I got you the let dolphins. it slide. You let it slide. You're well, getting no, no, soft I, boys. Uh, I, get, getting I got soft. I got the dolphins going 10 and seven. That feels realistic. I, I'm be. merely a uh, Sherpa of, of uh, conversation. And for the record, a uh, one of us uh, in that podcast, uh, can claim that their first bet of the season was Dolphins to win the division at three, <laughs> at, at a juicy price of plus three twenty. So, and that was by the way April eleventh at one fifty nine a.m. So, thank you very much, Adam. I may not be a coward, but yes, Big Rob is. I will, I will concede that point. Sorry, Big Rob. No, it's all right. Uh, big Big Rob knows. Yeah, oh, he, I can't wait. He, to doesn't, get... he doesn't want to go too hard on his uh, on all his right, takes but... here. All right, all right. Big picture here, Adam. I'm I'm assuming you're going to be high on this <laughs> Bills team. Couple of red flags for me looking at the Bills in the off season. Mm-hmm. One, Sean McDermott taking over the play calling for the defense. That to me feels like a a troubling sign. Are you worried at all that Sean McDermott's taking the role as DC and head coach? Does it worry you when a man in New England called Bill Belichick does the same thing? Does it say- worry you that Andy <laughs> Reid calls offenses? Does it worry you that Zach Taylor calls the offense? Good head coaches can call a side of the ball. It's not a problem. He trusts Ken Dorsey. Yes, Ken Dorsey mm. has his issues. Ken Dorsey had his growing pains last year, but Sean McDermott is ready. And guess what? This defense that was a top five defense last year, Kramer, going back to your slander about the elite defense, 
Kramer yes. didn't want to get back checked by his own organization, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I asked for the clip. Kramer, send me the clip so I can do some, <laughs> you know, appropriate, you know, contextualizing here. Uh -oh. Talking about the Bills defense isn't elite. They were elite last year, missing all of their all pro players. OK, except Tremaine Edmonds, Von Miller out for the season. Micah Hyde out for the season. Jordan Poyer playing with one elbow hanging off his body and no <laughs> meniscus in his knee. Trey White coming back early off of an ACL tear. This Bills defense is revamped, reloaded and ready to go top to bottom. Sean McDermott doesn't need to call this defense. The defense is going to call itself because everybody's oh. been sitting there <laughs> listening to people like you talking about Tua Tagovailoa and Aaron Rodgers behind a Swiss cheese line saying how they're going to be so good. I listened to every AFC East episode. I am gassed up. <laughs> Terrell will tell you I was fired up in the car back to Charlotte <laughs> from the expo. I was just firing on all cylinders the entire time time and to you in the chat 46 mantra too do you forget the bills signed a pass rusher named leonard floyd who Ooh. has been top five in sacks over the last five years let's take a uh, look at the oh, uh whoo. the roster changes can, adam 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 needs some air can, can, uh, can i have a time can, do sure. i get to do i get to speak here yeah uh, i would i would say my response to adam would be that the yes uh, the defense played well uh, I, I don't think I would argue that they're elite. And I think, you know, they, they seem to be in a position where they could fee face the same problems they faced last year, which is a couple injuries blows up the pass rush, creates a scenario where they struggle on third and fourth down uh, fluky a little bit with all the long conversions they gave up. But with the type of game they play, I don't know if that's the best strategy. And here, here's where I will say that Sean McDermott being the defensive coordinator is a little different. All other teams where the coach is calling the plays, they have someone listed as the DC or the OC, you know, who's listed as the defensive coordinator for the Buffalo bills, Sean McDermott. Mm. So uh, are we, are we looking to cut a little salary too? Like, what, <laughs> Why did Leslie Frazier leave? They were not prepared to replace him. Sean McDermott going to have to take his second eye off of Ken Dorsey, who clearly is a man who needs to be babysat at all times, <laughs> breaking the poor Microsoft surface last year, probably behavior. He learned down in Miami with the private school pussies. Heaven Diva. forbid someone uh. from a football school showed some passion. I'm sorry. They didn't teach you that at Virginia tech. Oh, Kramer. Oh, no, they didn't no. teach you how to be passionate about, you know, sports. I'm down right Just now. This is roll over. <laughs> and lose games. Don't care. Yeah. Don't get upset when you had the game and one little slip, one little thing goes wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry that our offensive coordinator has some passion and some fire in his belly. First question. He's, do do you agree with Isaiah McKenzie that the bills are a dome team? I would say Isaiah McKenzie is someone who <laughs> maybe didn't embody Buffalo the way to oh, oh, wow. and now Don't is an Indian and is now in Indianapolis. So he can, you know, not catch passes from Anthony Richardson. Wow. We'll see how much Isaiah McKenzie is complaining Ugh. about, you know, not be about, we'll see how much he likes being in a dome at the end of this year after this two and 13 Colt season that's loading. Oh, wow. They're not even going to play the 17 games. Yeah, they're I, just I done. They're just done. <laughs> see, this is. This is how much you guys have taken me out of it with your Adam's, bad previews and now, this. It's just woo. Adam, uh, you you talking about uh, embodying <laughs> Buffalo? Does Josh Allen's new Ooh. girlfriend Ooh. Haley Steinfeld, aka a you know a list Hollywood star, does she embody the grit and determination of the Buffalo Bills and the city of Buffalo in general? Do you know why is this, this is, a distraction? This is not a distraction. Do you know why? Because Josh Allen is the lesser famous person in that Ooh. relationship. Less people know about Josh Allen than know about Haley Steinfeld. So what I'm going to say is Josh now gets to be quiet, reserved in the background and doesn't have to carry the relationship from a star power standpoint. <laughs> Josh gets to focus on football and that's all Josh wants to do is focus on football. If you Googled 
uh, Haley Steinfeld boyfriend, you'll find some very funny pictures of Josh. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that he's known as Haley Steinfeld boyfriend. Also, <laughs> Steinfeld just sounds like my dad trying to pronounce oh. Seinfeld the TV show. Like, oh, are you watching uh, another episode of Steinfeld? Well, right, you know, friends, friends, cousin who lived <laughs> out in Long Island. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, looking at the 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 Bills schedule, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but you, yeah, let's go back to the uh, additions and losses, draft picks. I mean, I as a as a uh, Bills, you know, I, I like to see the Bills do well. I would have liked to see them, you know, get a young pass rusher in the first round. I was kind of surprised they went and spent their first round pick on Dalton Kincaid, considering they have. You know, they already have Dawson Knox, a guy they paid at tight end. I get it. They're going to use him more, maybe as like a slot receiver. Adam, what was your take on the Dalton Kincaid pickup and and just in general with what they did in the offseason? The two big losses that really hurt the Bills was the departure of Devin Singletary and the departure yeah. of Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine Edmonds is a cheat code in the middle of the defense, and that will be a hole they have to fill. However, they have Matt Milano and they have a bevy of young linebackers that they're going to rotate through. So they won't have, they may not have a three down linebacker, but they're going to be okay. Again, the rest of the defense is back and healthy. And for everybody saying the Bills needed a young edge rusher, they keep forgetting about a six foot seven monstrosity named Greg Rousseau. All right. Greg Rousseau, just remember, is 23. He is younger than two quarterbacks drafted this year in Hendon Hooker and Stetson Bennett. 23. He would be a rookie again. And he's going into his second year and he is or third year, and he's criminally underrated as an edge rusher and is emerging. And he's not going to have to be the primary edge rusher yet. Leonard Floyd and Von Miller are going to take a ton of pressure off of him. Devin Singletary is a big loss because he was phenomenal in pass protection for the Bills. We're going to miss him. But you know, Latavius Murray is a very capable pass blocker who I don't see listed on the key additions, even though <laughs> Latavius Murray is probably going to be the RB two behind James cook in this offense for anybody who's being paying attention to anything. I want to have to- words with our research department about this. This is uh, concerning that Damian <laughs> well, we Harris can only, we is can only there. fit so many names on there. Damian Harris. Coming we don't, in, we don't need one. Kyle Allen. Who's going to get, who's going to be cut for <laughs> Matt Barkley and I, the quarterback I, to be named the, later. the receiver. Uh, Trent Sherfield is up there. I think he is uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but I think he could be a sneaky anytime touchdown, first touchdown guy for the Bills. He had that role for the Dolphins a little bit. Again, not a guy like he's, you know, I, kind of in that Cole Beasley role. Am I? What are you? What are you hearing about Trent uh, Sherfield? The guy you're really looking for for the anytime touchdown is Deontay Hardy. Hardy's mm-hmm. been doing a lot out of the slot, taking the top off of the defense. He had some. He had a big year his first or second year in new Orleans, and is also probably going to handle a lot of the return duties for the bills. He's smaller, but he's explosive and he can make plays down the field. So you really got to think about that with Deontay Hardy. I'm liking him a little bit more than Trent Sherfield. Um, And again, they picked up Justin shorter in the draft and they have Khalil Shakir still and Dalton Kincaid again, you know, big slot receiver, something that the bills have been missing for several, several years at this point, they have really struggled since Cole Beasley left last year. Cole Beasley just wasn't the same. You know, Dalton Kincaid is going to fill that role in a way and give Josh Allen that security and safety blanket that he needs with a guy who can just get open continuously. Sean, can we uh, get a math sound effect or something? (laughs) All right. We, we football guy, math alert. Have you are we are you dialed in on the Sean McDermott eleven and a half personnel? No, walk uh, me through it. Well, because yeah, you see, Dalton Kincaid, <laughs> he's half a tight end, mm. so it's eleven. Yes. It's not yeah. eleven. I, per, I have heard that. You know why who, does this happen every couple of years? Where some innovative thing happens, where it's just a football guy doing math <laughs> and thinking they're really smart. You know how smart he thought he felt when. He he probably got stoned with Sean Payton and was like, oh my God. I'll call it eleven and a half personnel. <laughs> Genius. You know who I was chasing uh for first touchdown real quick was Reggie Gilliam. Oh. The the fullback uh who who they occasionally have thrown to has two career touchdowns. 
uh, for the Buffalo Bills. He he actually got a red zone catch in that Bengals game, and I had him first touchdown, hundred to one. Got a red zone catch. I uh, couldn't put it in, but um, and- why, I real quick on the Dalton Kincaid thing. Like, why do people think that this 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 guy, not Kyle Pitts, not every other tight end that's been athletic, Evan Ingram, not this guy is going to come in and be the one that can break the NFL. I, who I mean, does he get to play with? That's got to. Hmm. Who does he get to play with? Number one, and does he have to carry the offense day one? He gets to play with Josh Allen and Stefan, and it's still Stefan Diggs's offense. And the Bills have a good, strong running game. So the thing you have to keep in mind with Dalton Kincaid is he might he's going to have time to grow into that elite level. Travis Kelsey didn't come in and be elite from day one. He was a piece no, in an offense yeah, that, for a long that's time. That's my point. That's exactly my point. Like, I think people are really thinking that he's going to come in and smash. And I think there's even versions of this where he's not even on the field as much. Like, his, we're, what, that's going to be the big panic week one. It's going to so be Don Kincaid was only on the field for 30% the, of the snaps. The, the big formation that everybody, that everyone's getting really excited about is the personnel grouping of James Cook, Dalton Kincaid, Dawson Knox, Gabe Davis, and Stefan Diggs. Mm. And they start with like Knox and cook in the backfield and then they split out to some variation of guys out wide and you saw this earlier in the season before jake kumaro got hurt last year you know ken dorsey for whatever his faults were as a player is a very smart dude got a good education at miami from a football from a smart football school he wants to prove to everybody he's smarter and he probably hears all of the you can't do it without dayball thing so mm-hmm. I think the big thing you have to look at is, is he wanted to be multiple. He wanted to throw those different looks. He wanted two receiving tight ends on the field. They tried to do it last year with OJ Howard only to realize OJ Howard was so washed. The only team that wanted him was the Houston Texans. That's not going to happen this year. They have two talented tight ends. They have some receivers who can play. The big thing is going to be, you know, can they keep everybody healthy on the offensive side of the ball and be able to run their game plan. I think all the sharp teams are going to be running the two tight the ele- the eleven and a half personnel. I mean, you look look around the league. Look who's doing it: Atlanta, <laughs> Giants, <laughs> Buffalo Bills, uh, all Ravens. The, all the all the you're leaving houses. off. You're hold on. You're leaving off the Chiefs who throw. Chiefs. How many times do they have two tight ends on the field? Yeah. You have the Jaguars doing the same thing. Like you're saying this. Yes. I know. I know. It's funny that it's that it's eleven and a half. We can call it 12 personnel. It's fine. But the point should be at the end of the day, lots of teams in the NFL are doing this 49ers do it. The Eagles do it a bunch and it's taking over the league to have big physical pass catchers who create mismatches in space where you're covering them with a linebacker or that corner. It's the way the league is going. And the Bills said, well, we're going to be on the front end of this trend for once in our offensive life, Adam bills, offensive line. Uh, left tackle Deion Dawkins, only starting offensive lineman with a PFF pass block grade above 62 from last year. They're facing a top five pass rush schedule. You know, is is Spencer uh, Spencer Brown the right tackle? Where's he going to be at? I'm looking at their rankings. You know, not not certainly a top ten offensive line at least Uh-oh. start of the season. Are you worried about the offensive line? I'm always worried about the Bills offensive line because I've seen them get quarterbacks killed. But I think the big thing that you need to keep in mind is the Bills went out and they signed Osiris. They drafted Osiris Torrance in the second round, who is thought of as one of the best guards in yeah. this class. I mean, they went out and they made moves to address this. And I really think, yeah, this is this is a do or die year for Deion Dawkins. He needs to get better. And I honestly wouldn't be shocked to see the Bills take a tackle next year. That doesn't fix the problem right now. I'm. I think the offensive line is going to be the thing that really undoes this team in the long run. Uh, first off, the chat is just lit. I'm trying to keep up with the uh, the comments, and I, I do not agree with D. Bettis, who says Josh Allen without Dable is Carson Wentz 2.0. I just want to say I don't agree with that. He's he's put that in the chat, and I just that is that's well, going Car- too far. Yeah, Carson's Wentz's teams went to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, I would also say that in one last game last year, Josh had one fewer touchdown than he did the year before, and fewer interceptions. So he was going to surpass all of those numbers last year without as 
Brian, as Kramer likes to call him, Daddy Dable. Yes, Brian <laughs> <Well>, Dable's <laughs> influence in the offense was missed. And you saw it in the fact that they had to hit so many Superman big time plays. And I think that with a year under his belt, they're going to be better. Oh, by the way, Sean, your pass blocking stat left off Osiris Torrance, who had a PFF grade of 76 playing in the SEC last year. And more importantly, in run blocking, 89.9 road yeah. greater so, uh, open well, up that, holes for James Cook. I mean, so what do you, <laughs> all right, that's the other, that's the other like uh deep, dark, you know, get into the conspiracy theory Reddit concerns with the Buffalo Bills is now, now that McDermott is both the defensive coordinator and the head coach, he's going to want a more physical style of play. Like you said, a little bit more run uh, approach They they've never been able to run the ball with a running back. It's always been Josh Allen. And so my concern would be if I was a Bills fan is if they turn into that, you take away the magic. Oh, you take away the magic. I mean, he is he is a true gunslinger, right? I mean, that's that. You think he's got a flip phone? Who? Josh Allen. Oh no! Well, take pictures of his dick. <laughs> like all good gunslingers. Like a true gunslinger. I was gonna say to you know keep up with the Hollywood <laughs> star. Haley's probably like here's our here's our burner. We gotta have our secret Hollywood conversation. We need a video of like a sw- someone doing a switchblade thing, but with the phone. And then it's just like, like the comb. Brought a knife to a gunfight, sir. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I feel like we're doing a stress test on Adam. Like yeah, we're, we are. Or, or like a, a, well. a PhD where you have to defend your thesis, and Adam is just. He's sitting there. He's taking the bullets. He's he's firing them back. I think been preparing. I've been preparing. Like I said, I listened to the film. I've been ready for every argument you had. Just you know, been hyped and ready for it. You know what I'm hyped and ready for? Circus sports. Oh man, cannot wait. Counting down the days. <laughs> Sorry. August 24th to the 26th will be at Circus Sports, aka the Mecca. Bills fans, highly recommend going out there. Any any NFL fans, you can't call yourself a sports gambler if you haven't paid homage to. Uh, again, it really is a pilgrimage. You go there, you see the amazing sports book, the amazing stadium swim. You got the Beeson Studio there. Uh, great, great food. Uh, awesome drinks. But really, it's about just cash and bets. Again, they built the place, you know, by sports gamblers for sports gamblers. It's really a great, awesome experience. And of course, sign up for the contest. $14 million guaranteed. I mean, they got, I think they got like a 9 million overlay right now. Derek Sweat and Bullets. Head over to circusports.com, sign up in Vegas, play from anywhere, and come out and say hi. August 24th through the 26th, we'll be there signing up for the contest ourselves, getting down on multiple entries. Kramer. It's going to be a grand old time. It is going to be a grand old time. I think we haven't even gotten to the odds. Let's get those up on the board for your Buffalo Bills. Win total sitting at two and a half. Make playoffs at minus 265. Miss playoffs plus 225. Division a scant plus 120. Mm. Winning the conference five to one. Super Bowl nine to one. I, I'm sure Adam is really nervous about the uh, Dalvin Cook signing by the New York Jets. Wait, why would I be concerned about a guy oh, yeah. who was one of the worst before <sighs> contact runners in the NFL? A guy who's going to play behind a patchwork offensive line that, I, I mean, you know, I got a call yesterday from Robert Sala. He saw my flag football <laughs> tape and was wondering if I could come play offensive line for them for a little bit. I said no. I'm a little busy doing oh. this. <laughs> He's got Adam's got plans. Uh, she got Robert Zeke's Sala. card. He, Zeke's oh yeah, card. Uh, Zeke. Dalvin Cook, 43rd ranked running back last year according to Pro Football Focus. More like Dalvin Cooked, am I right? And no, oh, I, wow. I think it's really it's just bad news if you if you uh, drafted Brees Hall in the first round of fantasy uh, best balls, which we we've been trying to tell you and, not to do. And that ten and a half win total is free money. Put on your big boy pants and take the alt line up to 11 and a half or 12 and a half. Oh, wow. Jesus. Well, Adam, I can't you, wait to hit the Adam, schedule. Adam, you're tipping your hand. We haven't I, even gotten it. Sounds like he's going to be on the, on the over. Listen, we're just, we're firing bullets all night tonight, boys. To, to his credit, and, Sean, and Boston Capper's just really excited, you know, <laughs> calling me delusional. Capper, I'm just very excited oh, wow. 
<laughs> that the Patriots could solve their offensive line issues mm-hmm. by signing renowned pass blocker Ezekiel Elliott. L- listen, uh, Adam. It's great the, when they fight each other. The lion shouldn't concern himself with the sheep. Ah, that's very true. Very yeah. true. Just last three years, though, McDermott thirteen wins, eleven wins, thirteen wins in a sh- uh, strike shortened season or whatever the the uh, no game there. They were also number one in point differential last year without a game, so which is crazy. And again, nine of their wins came by more than nine points, so they really they put it on some teams in the regular season. Again, yeah, classic. I, they beat bad teams. They struggle against good teams. Uh, right? I I think the concern <laughs> is fourth most difficult schedule via win totals. Oh, yes. I didn't um, know the. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs were a bad team, Sean. New breaking news. Can we get the breaking news drop? Kansas City Chiefs, bad team. Hey, I was uh, on the Bills against the Chiefs. Uh, from Kramer week just nine, said they only beat bad teams. No, no, I don't they know struggle what you want against me. good teams, is what I said. From week nine on, they face seven of the top ten teams in Super Bowl odds. So, Bills are going to get a, a a pretty good test here in the regular season. Kramer, let's let's uh, walk through the schedule. What do we uh, got? For the first quadrant, let's do it. All right, opening the season, of course, prime time on the road in New York against Aaron Rodgers and Dalvin Cook, mm. and Garrett Wilson, and probably Devontae Adams at that point, and whoever else is going to join the super team. Uh, Monday Night Football. Then you got the Raiders at home at Commanders and Dolphins at home. I, I man, the, the the way that the Bills struggled with Skyler to end the it's in the playoffs there. I, I would assume the the right thing to do is probably give the Bills Dolphins a home home split. So I'll I'll say that's two right there. And boy, I we really I I want to say we gave this to the Bills when we were doing the Jets preview, Sean. Which means I just got the three and I thought I was down on the team. I don't know how they're gonna win win all these games without <laughs> Dayball. Three and one, I think. Three and one. Yeah, I mean, let's see this this Buffalo team. I mean, you have Raiders is auto lock. Yeah, I mean, in that's Buffalo, a teaser right now. I'm already putting that in. Teaser. I get, how Bills, does Bills minus one and a half? Jimmy G on a long road trip. Uh, and then the Bills offense against the secondary. So even if they, even if they somehow lose to the Jets, although again, Jets new offense, a lot could go wrong there. I think actually at Commanders, while I. I I think that could be a little trickier just because I don't know, maybe that maybe the commander's front seven. I just yeah, I'll go I'll go three and one here. I think, you know, outside of the Raiders, they do play three decent ish teams. I mean, not that I think the commanders are gonna be great, but it's gonna be in Washington. Um, probably coming off a loss against the Broncos, non conference road game. You know, you're looking ahead maybe a little bit to the division. I can't get you to four and one. I can give you three and one. Adam, four and zero. Oh. Okay, so we've got a Jets team that is now ha- has a patchwork offensive line <laughs> with Mackay Becton just coming back. Can't still can't play the full playing quarters. Seven snaps in the hall. Okay, of fame yeah, he played seven <laughs> snaps. Jarred. I'm sorry, seven snaps. He still can't do it. And let me just go to Aaron Rodgers was not spectacular last year, and the it's true. Jets receiving core outside of Garrett Wilson is Swiss cheese. Okay. Ooh. The Jets. How dare are, that's Alan Lazard you're talking about, Adam. Yeah, come on. Jesus Christ. Uh, he's, cue he's the meme of Aaron Rodgers saying, get me weapons, and then goes to the <laughs> Jets and gets the same thing he had all those years. Jets is a W. Raiders is a W. Commanders is a W. Dolphins is a W. This team is four and zero <laughs> heading into their home game across the pond in London. All right. Uh, so then they they so uh, wow. Okay, I didn't see that one coming. Then they take to the road where the colonies will uh, head back to the to, to London. That, which that's is not a that's not a road game, Kramer. Uh, there have been multiple Buffalo Bills backers <laughs> bar crawls that are sold out already <laughs> in oh, London, no. oh, and God. everyone pray for, pray for the people. Oh, of England. London is not ready for this. I don't we, think they really are. They think soccer hooligans are something. We're gonna show them some hooligans. Well, and in fairness, Sean, we did on the Jags preview suggest that them staying in London for a week might not be good for them. So, uh, no, no, wait. This is the Jags' second uh, London yeah, th- game. Yeah, this okay. is the back the back end of their second London game. So but technically, yeah, they'll can... have a rest edge here. 
Uh, but yeah, it's an interesting handicap because it's certainly the first time we've ever seen that. Then you have the Giants at home on Sunday Night Football, aka the Day Bowl. Then you have at Patriots and Buccaneers on Thursday Night Football. Uh, the, I circle the Bucks one. That's that's a win. I I tend to agree with Adam. Actually, I do. Like, if there's ever going to be a fan base that can influence a game in England, I feel like it is this Bills mob. I, and we're gonna, I am I am interested Sean. to see what it's like. A, a team like London, or like the Jags, because I think for the Jags in a weird way, that first game could be tougher because you're almost looking ahead exactly towards that second said. game. So I think that actually the fact that they're already have been out there, they yep. they've gotten used. I don't know. I don't know if you're. I I don't think you can drink the water in London. Yeah, I'm not can, sure. You can. Yeah, oh, you can. And, okay. and they'd be coming off a loss against Arthur but Smith, your which is not for everyone. Accustomed to the fish and chips, you got that malted vinegar can oh. do do a number to you. Now Doug Bills, P loves that shit. Bills coming in red hot. Maybe Haley Steinfeld has to oh. want, to, want to do a selfie over by Big Ben. You know he's getting oh, distracted. Oh, I mean wait, we saw. Wait, you mean the clock or? <laughs> Ben Roethlisberger. <laughs> we saw we saw Russell Wilson and and he seemingly got distracted over there. I worry about, but you know J- uh, Josh's focus. I mean but, he can't find a, I mean uh, there's not a chicken like a Buffalo Wild Wings you can you can settle down with. Uh, yeah. I, all that being said, you know you got at Pats, not an easy spot, but I'm not super high on the Patriots. Bucks at home Thursday night, even as a a Bucks truther, I'll go three and one. Wow, Kramer. Well, I was gonna say you uh, you actually just laid out the exact theory I put out on the Falcons uh, podcast where I said the Falcons would beat the Jags. You didn't agree, uh, so yeah, uh, talking about a lot of games. But yeah, I do think that Jags game is a game that the Bills uh, should win. I do think Brian Table, knowing the intricacies of how Josh Allen's brain works, love the Giants with the points <laughs> there. Uh, I'm with you. I, just, I I still think this is three and one. I oh. don't know how I got to six and two. I thought I was going to come in well, here. Wait till you get to the second, second half of the schedule is yeah, where the rubber meets the road. A- Adam, can you can you can you get him to eight and no? The the chat wants to know. Bills Mafia DJ yeah, has not a seven even a and question one. because uh, no. Listen <laughs> to me here, okay? I'm the listening. only game I'm in on this stretch I'm, I'm scared about is the Giants. Okay, I'm really? nervous. I am. I'm nervous about going across the pond and coming back. But I will say the Bills over the last two years are eight and two in regular season, primetime games. I'm not worried. Josh Allen won't be scared by the spotlight. The thing that terrifies me is Darren Waller because for whatever reason, no one seems to be able to cover good tight ends. Just look at what Travis Kelsey does. The giants make me nervous, but I think the bills handle it. Do I think they cover hell? No, seven and a half is a giant number. I hope that number gets smaller, but it probably won't because the bills are going to be five and zero, oh and have just kicked the absolute living piss out of the Jaguars <laughs> in London in front of God and country, you know, King and country will have witnessed a massacre of Doug Peterson and the Jags w- worth noting. The giants will be coming off. That will be the second of a back-to-back at Miami at Buffalo stretch. So not exactly the easiest and the uh, bill Belichick and the Patriots will be coming off uh, Belichick. I don't know. I don't know whatever they're going to do in Las Vegas, but that's who they play the week before. So things tend to get wonky there. Sean might be talking about Gatorade being dumped. Who knows? <laughs> All right. Next. Four. If the Giants win that game, yes, they will dump Gatorade, and that'll be the high point of this oh, season. Stop. Now wow. you're talking, Adam. Now you're oh, talking. Now he's talking smack. And right. I love your optimism that Waller will make it to Week Six. Appreciate oh, the optimism. Wow. Just listen. Strap. I have a. I am very heavily invested in Darren Waller on several dynasty teams. Go. This has been what I've been looking for for a while here. Well done, uh, uh, boss. Adam. Boss and Capper with a mortgage whale play on Jags over Buffalo. Shots fired. Whoa. They are the London Jags, but I, I'm I look gonna forward go, to owning Capper's house. I, I you sound like the bank. Uh, uh, yeah, I was gonna say, you know, maybe the. So yeah, I mean, I, I think the, I think the Jags will be a home team against most teams not named the Buffalo Bills because I, I do kind of believe like this could be like a once in a lifetime vacation for a lot of these people. Mm. That is the prevailing thought among many. Bills fans. I think the Bills bar in Charlotte might be kind of quiet that weekend because everybody's going to be in London taking over. And I imagine the Irish Bills fans are going to come to town. Shout out to at Bills Airy uh, on 
Twitter, I know he's going to make the trip down and oh, we'll just be of the showing out to you lads. He'd be jumping through tables. Well, eh? Sean, we need to get that carry on. They pot of the gold with Josh Allen. We, we got to get that carry on size table <laughs> uh, yes. up in the merch store. Oh, so uh, some, all, some... all, all the bills fans can carry it, uh, you know, safely carry it on and not worry about losing their table in transit. <laughs> All right. Them running out of tables in when they played the uh <laughs> who was it, the Jags? Yeah. It was the it, Jags. It was the it was the year Tyra they broke game. the streak. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we're halfway through the season, Sean. Mm. Next four at Bengals on Sunday night football. A little mini buy there, of course. They're coming off Thursday night. Then you have Broncos on Monday night. Uh, I believe the Bills are tied for the lead with six primetime games. Uh it looks like they even have if you count Saturday, it's maybe a seventh. Then you have uh, so at Bengals Sunday night football, Broncos Monday night football, Jets at home at Eagles, week twelve so before the bye week. If I was um, and I, I would want to pitch this to uh, our fearless leader Roger Goddell. Oh wow! Well, be careful, Sean. People didn't like when you said that. Didn't I, understand the joke. I like Bengals at Bills at Bengals didn't happen last year, or it oh. started to happen. Tomorrow Hamlin obviously yeah. had that serious injury. It didn't. It didn't. We didn't get to finish the game. Started to happen. Didn't finish. Got it. Can we count Bills at Bengals as two games? I think that would be fair. It would even out the rec. So you either, after this game is over, you either get two wins or two losses. Oh, so it's like a carryover hole in golf. Yes, this is a skins match. I think it should count for two games. Why is it in? Once again, Bills getting screwed with the home field. No, well, it was supposed to be last time. They didn't. What they weren't able to finish the game. Now it's why now is it in Cincy again? Because talk to the schedule makers. I mean, the NFL coming after our poor, poor folks in Buffalo. We're I fine mean, look, with it. We have no know. ill will against oh. Cincy. Cincy, Cincy is kindred spirits with us. We love him. You know, Rust Belt cities, Cincinnati fans. We love you. We're hoping for a great game. Jesus. Let's tailgate <laughs> and have a great time and watch a great football game. One of us has to lose, unfortunately. That's the first game on the Bills' schedule that really has me nervous. I think this is a very tough stretch for the for Bills. I think the at Bengals game is a tough emotional spot, and then versus Broncos Monday night. Uh, you know, matchup wise, I do like them. And again, Russ picking right Ooh. up where he left off, uh, looking like this point, anyway. looking like complete dog shit. I think it's still him here. Uh, but I think that could be an emotional. Even if they beat the Bengals, I think that's a really tough spot against the Broncos the following week. Uh, I'm gonna say they struggle. Broncos coming off the bye there too, by the way. They struggle a little bit here. Can I get them to one and three? I can. One and three here. I think this is a tough spot. Obviously, they're gonna lose to the Eagles. Um, I, I think they either beat the Jets or the Broncos. I don't think they beat both. I think this is a little tough. Middle ground here. So, at least, Sean, I, I yes. just want to be clear here. We watched Russell Wilson's preseason <laughs> performance yeah. against the Cardinals' backups, was, and it you was bad. think, and you are honestly going to sit there and tell me the Bills are losing to the Broncos and the Jets in this stretch. I, you're going to sit there and tell me the Broncos have a snowball's chance in hell of beating the Bills. Maybe if Josh <laughs> Allen's like in a body bag, they have a chance. Well, I, Even I, then, I'm hard pressed to believe it. I I think you have to responsibly give the Jets a split with the Bills based on what happened last year. I think you, I think the Broncos are are coming off a bye, so that actually is a strangely difficult spot coming off and like it's a it's definitely a flat spot. And I think the Eagles are coming off a game against Kansas City, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that that could no, it actually is a really tough spot for uh, the Eagles. That being said, I'm not going to give this uh, win to Adam. Not not with two the and Bills. Two. two and two. Okay. Now I'll I'll give you two and two. I think wow. I think the Bengals. Wow. I think the Bengals and the Eagles games are going to be tough. I could. Those are the two that I see them dropping. I so don't Ryan, see them losing to the Broncos, and I don't see them losing to a quarterback. Who has seen his court? Who has seen his completion percentage <laughs> decline each of the last two years? He's gonna have. He's gonna have twelve with passes. Nathaniel Hackett. It's gonna be a Samaj P Ryan breakout game. How old is Samaj P Ryan now? Thirty four. 
Yeah. <sighs> it's, 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 that's when you're hitting your peak. Uh, so Ryan, right now I got them seven and five. You have them eight and four Adam leading the pack, obviously here at oh. 10 and two late by week, late so by week, which is good for the bills or, or not good. If they have a hard time getting there. Week 14 coming off the bye, massive spot at Chiefs. Then you got the Cowboys at home at Chargers on Saturday. I have a feeling that will be a Bills home game. Yeah. Then you have, although that is a holiday weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Then you have the Patriots at home at Dolphins. So I already said I was going to have them split against the Dolphins. So I'll give them the loss there. I I do think they split the Patriots, so they they got to get that win. Actually, no, I gave them. Oh, oh, interesting. I gave the Patriots one. All right, so I'll say three and two. Three and two, Ryan. You or, have what's that? What did I just have them go to? Have them sliding in home at eleven and six. Oh, that's that might not be acceptable. I think this is interesting because obviously at Chiefs, actually which two I, and three, two and three, two and three, two and three, knocking them down to ten and seven. At Chiefs is a tough spot. Now I I do have the Cowboys going six and eleven, um, so I don't. Uh, oh. you know, six I'm, six wins. Yeah. Where'd you find those? No, maybe five and twelve. I'll have to. I'll have to I thought we at. agreed. Zero and seventeen. That's actually after the Chiefs game. Non-conference is a tough spot, but again, it's the Cowboys. They'll figure out a way to fuck it up. I mean, the, you have three road games at at Kansas City, at San Diego, at Dolphins. Like this is a really you know, with the holidays around, you have to get the perfect gift for your Haley Steinfeld. Oh, you wow. have to really impress her. You're, you're <laughs> going to be Christmas shopping. You think he knows anything about <laughs> gifts? Oh, he, he gives out gifts. I mean, he's a very giving guy. If you've seen his uh, oh, interception wow. ratio, I, I would say mm, four and one would be tough. I think three and two is realistic. I'm not quite okay. as negative as you, Ryan. Oh, four and three. one is tough. Like like <laughs> what what game on this schedule At other Chiefs. than the Chiefs is challenging? Other than the Chiefs, I'll give you the At Chiefs. At Dolphins. At Dolphins. Josh Allen is eight and two against the Dolphins since coming into the NFL. And that took half his team suffering of heat stroke last year for the Dolphins oh. to win. Listen, <laughs> they, they needed the to be time. better prepared. Okay. And the Dolphins defense is even older than the Bills right now in the secondary. You need to come down off of this dolphins Kool-Aid. Stop drinking the teal stuff. I don't know what <laughs> happened. Who did y'all hang out with at the expo that you're talking like to Anon over there? Oh. Now it started bad on the Dolphins episode, but it's just gotten worse. And Brandon Staley is going to be fired halfway through this year. Oh, wow. The Chargers oh. are going to be a dumpster fire trying under Kellen Moore, first time head coach trying to salvage his job for next year. The Patriots will be done. It they'll be alternating between Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones oh before the goodness. end of the year. <laughs> no. Four and four and one easy here to close out. Four and one All easy. Right. So Adam, Adam coming in with a very reasonable 14 and three. Oh, that's good. Three losses just to show everyone you're serious. <laughs> uh so Ryan and I are on the under 10 and a half wins. Again, I think it's gonna be close. I as much as we're busting his balls, I, I, they do have a very good team. I do think the little bit of like a well, little bit of drama there, the red zone turnovers for Josh Allen. There's a couple the issues with the offensive the, line. The red zone turnovers when he had half a UCL in his arm and oh, had to change his throw. <laughs> no, don't oh no me, Kramer. Oh, don't no. oh no me at all. Okay. <laughs> I, I know. Listen, I, I know Kramer worked really hard to keep the videos of him throwing the football at the expo off the internet. <laughs> but Josh Allen, with half an elbow, threw the ball better than Ryan Kramer did. Wow! It, and it was just—it's well, not even close. And so, Josh, full reconstruction you know, of my shoulder. By the you, way. you know, the elbow injury. Sure. Call it an excuse. Call it whatever. It matters. It influenced the season. And despite all of that last year with all the injuries, they still went 13 and three. They went 13 and three in 2020. This is a consistent 13, 14 win team. This is the year they're putting it all together. And guess what? Everybody's talking them down right now. 
everybody everywhere is on the Dolphins and the Jets. But guess what? Have you ever <laughs> noticed how e in media where all these people want to talk about the Dolphins, none of them are actually Dolphins fans. You know why? Because no one wants to be a Dolphins no. fans. No one wants Miami to be successful. They're going to say <laughs> they will because they think they need to hate on Buffalo. It's just you need to accept the fact the Bills are going to be a 13-14 win team this year because the offense is going to have another year with the coordinator. They're going to improve. Josh's arm isn't going to fall off his body and be held together with staples where he's gushing blood from his elbow in every game. <laughs> <laughs> and the defense can't possibly be more hurt than they were last year. Oh, and don't forget, this is a team that had to deal with their owner having a heart attack in the off season, who's very popular and very close with all those players and then have their teammate have a cardiac event on the field. And they still held it together through all of that last year to win 13 games and a playoff games. Yeah. It was a disappointment from a certain standpoint, but you also have to look at it from the bills made it through the most. <laughs> I don't know that you could go through any team's 12 month stretch and look at more things that happened to that team and say, wow, they only did that M much better teams have fallen apart under less adversity. Wow. Uh, for me, you mentioned wow. the, the cardiac incident. Give me, oh my goodness. I mean, this price is insane. Comeback player of the year. Damar Hamlin is minus two eighty five. He literally rose from the dead. How does this get, guy not get the award? It's a narrative driven thing. He died on the field when I, mm. I mean, did he technically die? Yeah, his heart stopped. Like they pronounced him dead. I don't know. I'm no, not a doctor. They don't pronounce you dead while they're still reviving. But, <laughs> but imagine the reception he is going to get when he comes out on that field at the Bengals. It's going to be a standing ovation. It's going to be electric. His comeback of the year price. Mark my words. During that game, after that game, it's going to be minus two million. Comeback player Whoa. of the year, Demar Hamlin, minus two eighty five. What are we doing here, people? The, the guy Guy died and he is now alive. That is the greatest comeback of all time. He that, almost died. Well, he he did die according his to his heart stopped and he was resuscitated. He was pronounced dead. I, I don't think he we was, need to argue the degree to which uh, Jamar uh, Hamlin was not pronounced dead. <laughs> yeah, that that's fine, but I, I think we're splitting hairs at that point. Well, because Sam Darnold could have a great season. <laughs> Maybe he's able to, to overcome. It, it's to me, it's it's easy. Um, as far as like other prop bets, it's interesting because I'm I was kicking around some other ones. I mean, Gabe Davis to lead the AFC East in receiving yards. Uh that's 20 to 1. Adam, what are some but I, I well, couldn't really there. even talk to myself into that. Stay there for a second. Cause well, I mean, all right, so Diggs, he uh very squeaky wheel. Yeah. They brought in this big dynamic receiving threat to take up some space in the middle of the field. Okay. Could dig could and and maybe uh Josh Allen, like Adam says, is is good now that his elbow is healthy and he just shreds. Mm. Could Steph Diggs put up enough counting stats to be offensive player of the year? Steph no. Diggs? No, no, because if he puts up enough points to be if he has that kind of year, it's going to go to Josh. Like yeah. Josh is going. If they're having that kind of year, well, Josh, Josh is the MVP, and they won't give but, it. They won't give Josh both. <laughs> no, but I, I think I, I can't think of a time now. Correct me if I'm wrong in the chat where you offensive you player stack. of the year and. Uh, MVP were two separate guys on the same team. To Adam's point, it's like it, the the window you have to thread there. I think is too small. Again, it's like two hundred to one. I also because he's in the chat, Boston Capper, uh, who had a heart attack. He had a hundred percent blockage. Where are his roses? Listen. So I'll also tell me tell Capper me what your address is, Capper. We're glad <laughs> you're here. We're blessed you're here, Capper. As much as I've loved, you know, as much as it's hurt my soul to hear you shitting on my bills like this capper. I'm glad you're here to do it. And I hope no, we do it in nice. person yes. someday. Just absolute love and respect to you capper and but, glad you're still with us, man. It's nice that you're saying nice things about him, but he was kind of coming after DeMar. <laughs> he was trying to say like, what about me? What about, oh, uh, <laughs> oh, look at DeMar Hamlin getting all this attention. What about me? What about me? <laughs> oh, poor. Yeah. So I, I, I honestly, Cause it stood out to me. I, I think there's some other 
like the 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 receivers in the same kind of class as him, I, I think uh, have shorter odds. Well, so. Adam, I mean, obviously you you're high on the Bills. Division wins are set at uh, four and a half, and you're getting Ooh. plus two sixty five on the over. Ooh. I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> should I jot that down for you? Can can I tease that up to an alt line of like oh. five and a half? I, I would <laughs> wow. I would go I would I would take that line up if I could because I think a divisional sweep is very much in the cards for the Bills. Yeah, at fourteen and three, I I would imagine you like that. Now, what? How high are we going on the alt over wins? Are you going over uh, twelve and a half? While what? we were in Ohio, I did get down. I took it up to eleven and a half because that got me to plus money, and I said, okay, you know. 12 wins feels good. There are a couple games in there. You could talk me into them maybe dropping a game to the Jags or another team along the way there. I don't think it's likely, but I could do it. Um, so give me free money at 12 at 11 and a half. 12 12 and 5. Oh Happy with that. Now now what about the what about the ultimate future prices conference 5 to 1 Super Bowl? Nine to one. If I'm How getting down on conference, you know I'm sitting here with my bills plus nine hundred going to the Super Bowl. Just okay. winning the Super Bowl, not <laughs> even a question. Part of a robust Bills ticket going on right now, including Steph Diggs free money. You're not plus money, but over eleven twenty five receiving yards. Just I mean, just take the book's money. It's fine. Like if they're going to give you money, why are you going to look a gift horse in the mouth? Yeah. I never really understood that one. To be honest, Sean looking a gift horse in the mouth. Yeah, why, or do you look Stephon at, Diggs? why do you look at anything in the mouth? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, uh, I just, I, you know, I, I'd, I'd also Gabe Davis over seven seventy five, easy. Yeah. 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 And so, Last last prop. Sorry, I no, no, you, keep you going. put me. Listen, I was like a kid in a candy store, being back where it was legal. <laughs> it was great. Um, you know, as anyone can attest, who saw me sweating an EPL? Yes, he was. He had <laughs> EPA. Well, everyone else is walking around a fantasy convention. Uh, Greg Rousseau over seven and a half sack, seven point seven five sacks, free money. He had eight last year in thirteen games. And the defensive line, uh, the books are just giving us money on these bills props. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know if they're just feeling charitable or what, but you're just free money after free money after free money. Right. We do need a third column for guys like Bill and, and uh, Katie who just fill up the slip with a uh, lot of and lot then, of positive. Bits. And then. Oh, well, well, this. Um, yeah, I mean, what about Adam? If you like Rousseau over seven and a half, seven point seven five sacks, are you going? All the way to Greg Rousseau, Defensive Player of the Year. No, because the national media doesn't want to talk about him. Ooh. Let's not forget everybody. Two hundred to one. The Bills need an edge rusher. The Bills need this, that, the other thing, and they're forgetting about Groot. I mean, you could talk me into it. I just don't think the narrative will be there because, unless he has an absolutely transcendent year, which he could, he's been comped by many people in camp to Mario Williams. Wow. I All actually, right, so, I am going to put a small sprinkle but, on Rousseau. Uh, but they call two hundred to one defensive player. They the call year. him Groot because he has long limbs, or because he's fragile like wood. <laughs> because he he's has long like limbs, built like a tree, six foot six, two sixty seven. I think so he has does, six nine wingspan. How does that work? Like Vin Diesel goes in. I mean, how long is that recording session? Like Groot, I am Groot. Groot. I so there's Groot. an emotional range to Groot. Okay, <laughs> just remember that. But it's got to take a solid what, forty five minutes. I feel like you could just uh, like do that on the car ride over. <laughs> yeah. All I, right. I honestly, I don't. I don't. I have nothing fun to, to Ju say. About Justin the, Wood, the uh, noted Bengals fan, who uh, we will be uh, oh, taping his episode next, saying Don Beebe over three thousand yards. Also, kind of calling out Adam for uh, for talking uh, for hyping up all these bills. Kramer, you haven't given out any other props. I got you down for ten and a half wins. What else do you like here? I jotted down bills? a couple fun ones because I do think I do think uh, Adam is correct. They're going to try to run the ball more. Not a big over guy, but I'm I'm smashing James Cook in the best ball streets right now. Smash. I do think it would be uh, he would have to get hurt to not go over six seventy five and a half rushing yards. So I guess I'll say something nice about the Bills with that. Uh, <laughs> it, I mean, we do have him going ten and seven. It's well, not like a complete fade. Egregiously of this. and slanderously. 
<laughs> Second place, which by the way, the Zeke, oh, wow. the Zeke yardage prop is four twenty five. They they got they rapidly weed, got that. Out weed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I, I think. What's Buffalo's second place in the division? Two ten. Uh, oh, <laughs> you, you can't. All right, that. keep it you, up. You that made sense. That made That's up. just. That made up. Guys, up. they've won the division the last three years, and you're out on, and you're talking Actually, like Tua and Mike McDaniel's are going to supplant him. I ruined my own bit. And uh, you're James thinking the Jets are going to supplant them? Nathaniel Hackett has more seasons in the That's bottom true. 20 in the below 25 than he does in the top five by a it wide would, margin it would be the dolphins that would that take him over and actually the the other half of my james cook bet is to, you also put three and a half touchdowns on that sheet of oh. over three and a half rushing touchdowns. okay cook over that's the one thing I like about this team because I, I we we kind of glossed over it, but I do think they they might run a little bit with with or at least to maybe reduce some of the Josh Allen things that Josh Allen tends to like to do. Yeah, they're going to definitely get Cook involved more. I mean, there's close to, you know, there's a little over there's about 260 carries that went to backs last year that are going to be firmly in James Cook's opportunity plus about 70 to like right, 70 more. something. This nope. is insulting. Uh, and it's got to be a brand new one. Doubt so James Cook versus brother yeah, rushing yards. Oh, this what do you fun. think the line is? Well, the the thing is, Dalvin Cook got paid starter money, so I think I I think Israel Abanaconda is there though. Sean. Well, I I love Izzy, hundred fifty to one rookie of the year. Let's go, Iz. Uh I mean, I think the books are going to make Dalvin Cook the favorite, so I'm going to say Cook Dalvin Cook minus seventy five yard favorite. Oh wow! Yes, it, just a money line, and I was shocked to see James Cook is plus one twenty. So yeah, so give me James Cook. James Cook versus Dalvin oh, Cook. Oh, that's insane! I'm with Adam on this one. I like James Cook looks like his brother four years ago when he was still explosive. Yeah, no, uh, and and we since we already taped the Patriots episode, I will be adding Zeke under four fifty and a half rush yards to my card here, even though it is the Bills episode. But uh, they also, do they do play the Cowboys and the Bills. So, I'm also going to take and the, and the uh, Zeke under one and a half pancake blocks. <laughs> you, you do know, we have the advanced stats? Oh, if, if you don't if you don't follow us on Twitter, um, one of the funniest things that we've ever put on on the internet. <laughs> Is the Patriots' latest depth chart where Zeke is listed as the backup center? You know what I'm going to do right now, and this is this joke is for like five people, but I'm going to tweet at Brandon Thor, uh, uh, offensive line Thorn, oh, Thorn yeah. Yeah. offensive line uh, expert, if he can update <laughs> his uh, rankings for the Patriots with the signing of Zeke. Ah! Yeah, it's uh, a joke for five people, and, but and one more that I forgot that I oh, put down nope, because nope, continue. Uh, as a you know, while we're at the expo, you know, everybody else is sleeping in. You know, we've all been sweating bets all night, and then everybody else is sleeping in. But I'm up, I'm rising, I'm grinding. You know, <laughs> got the house to myself, really focusing in. And I discovered DraftKings has this lovely dominance tab, <laughs> and you can have Josh Allen total regular season passing yards versus the Dolphins seven oh one to eight fifty at plus three fifty. <laughs> Back two three fifty plus yard passing games for Josh Allen. Yes, please. Yes, please. Take it to I, the bank. Oh, I love that. I love that he found the 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 dirty dark tab. Uh can I can I give you this was more of just a pleasure wager, just narrative driven? Yes. Oh, I, I I lost it in my spreadsheet. Hold on. Cause this I, I placed this a long time ago just because it's gonna be poetic when it happens. Plus uh Sixteen hundred, no, sixteen thousand. Okay, plus sixteen thousand, so one hundred sixty to one. Bills Giants Super Bowl matchup. Hundred and sorry, Just sixty to one. Hundred and sixty, hundred and sixty to one. Bills Giants Super Bowl matchup. Just in case. Mm. Just Kramer, in case. When that happens, I cordially extend an invitation for you yes. to come and watch the game with us here. <laughs> well, I'm about to. That put was a, that was a, that was my first loss as a better when I bet on oh, the yeah. bet on the Buffalo Bills. Fucking Norwood owes me fifty uh, cents. And, and last thing, uh, I had this prepped, um, but I want to make sure I get to use it. I, I very much enjoy the Stefan Diggs non-holdout holdout narrative mm. that things might be bad. Um, 
I, I would also encourage everybody to consider Chris Jones still hasn't signed his contract with the Chiefs. No. We're not worried about that. No, nope, Nick nope, Bowe no still holding out for oh, the 49ers. We, yeah, we heard from Katie earlier. There's no issues there. Everyone's, uh, everything's fine. Everybody's happy. Everybody's good. Uh, Josh Jacobs, I don't think he's been seen in Raiders camp yet. Uh, and uh, Trent Brown picking and choosing when to practice for the Patriots as part oh, of wow. a hold as part of a hold in. So uh, just uh, anytime someone wants to bring up Stefan Diggs missing a voluntary mini camp, we talking about not even practice. Yeah, yeah. Let's Sean, just Sean, remember the guys who actually are missing. Practice he sounds, and he sounds a lot like one of these Patriots fan who taught himself physics era. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. He does sound like the uh, big Rob when he was talking about other players yeah. and their concussion oh, stats. All of a sudden, oh. How, oh, oh, media doesn't talk about all these other guys getting concussed. Just Tua. Yeah, they're out. You to know get how him hard it was brain. to find an article about Chris Jones holdout or <laughs> Nick Bosa's holdout. Oh, yeah, they're trying to hide it from us. They all really right. are. Uh, time for everyone's favorite prediction. Who will be the 2023 a Buffalo Bills MLD, aka the most likely Dejan? Who? Who will it be that will get busted for gambling on the NFL or some other infraction? Kramer, do we save? Do we save Adam for last, or do we like Adam? No, no, because I, I would hate if we stomped on I don't Adam s- and and made it hard, not as good as Adam. I do have a backup one in case Adam steals mine, but right. Adam, I, I think I think you we have all the floor. had an idea because we've all heard the rumors. We've all heard the innuendo <laughs> all off season. We've heard about a man in the Buffalo bills organization who just, you know, in true D gen fashion, one isn't enough. He's got to have two. <laughs> He's got to have three, maybe even doubling down at the same time. And then if that's not enough, allegedly rumor has it, he doesn't want insurance or any sort of protection while he's doubling down and he's just going at it, just going double fist and going at it, double dipping with oh, no is, regard for anything electric. at all. This is where we get sued boys. This is the moment. Forget everything <laughs> else we've ever said. This is the one. So Josh, just a man, no regard, no caution, just throwing it all to the wind. Devil may care. And I'll just take my losses and send you out the door with a bag of my with bags. And I don't care. And I'm on to the next thing and on to a better thing. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, there is one correct answer. Josh Allen. Hashtag I I will say I actually have a personal story here. I've shared this, I think briefly on the podcast before, but I did spend some time in Northern California. Colorado on a dude ranch with a guy who alleged to be a fraternity brother of Josh Allen. Josh Allen certified. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. Yeah, just apparently they were, you know, a lot, lot, of, <laughs> lot of gambling type activities, a lot of lady <laughs> type activities. We we've seen some of the fraternizing <laughs> stuff come out in the media. Uh, he's star fucking now, so you can see the kind of guy he probably was in college. D. Bettis um, say he's nominated Demar Hamlin for his MLD because he has nothing to lose. I do like that. I do like that. Um, for me, Ryan, let it all ride. DeMar. Yeah, he's the ultimate letting it ride. Is he betting on himself for comeback? Well, he, I mean, again, a guy he might take some Darnold action. Take I don't know that he's. I don't know that he's a Phil Mickelson where he's just betting the massive negative number. Mm. He, no, he he's, seems he a little is, smarter than that. Well, he is kind of betting. Some would argue betting his life by by going out there again and and risking it all. And that's how much uh, again, yeah. just building a great case for Demar Hamlin, comeback player of the year. For me, Ryan, I uh, Matt Barkley did list Bitcoin in his profile and does have laser Bitcoin eyes, which is a true degen tell. What do you think he's using that Bitcoin for? <laughs> to, maybe to deposit on offshore books. For me, though. My MLD, it has to be Von Miller. Oh, it's smoking my weed. Von Miller, of course, you know, um, cheated a drug test. The attempted cheating involved a collector <laughs> in Miami who was quote starstruck <laughs> by Miller, according to the report. The collector in question switched Miller's test with another urine sample. 
which again, you have to must be like pretty sure the other person's not doing uh, doing drugs as well. The inaccurate test was noticed by a second collector who realized that the Broncos defender was not present in Miami when the test was supposed to have been taken. The, and also really rolling the dice with just a random person's Miami urine that they don't have drugs in it. But um, the collector who attempt to help cheat uh, or help to cheat Miller has been fired. So Avon Miller let some poor guy take the uh, take the blame. Got him fired. Never heard from Von Miller again. So Von Miller really knows how to break the rules. Knows how to get caught. AKA perfect MLD material. Kramer, how say you? Well, uh, this man hails from New Jersey, Rawway, by the way, not too far from where I grew up. So fellow Jersey legend, which also you immediately on the radar. It's like going to school at Iowa state at this point, <laughs> you're immediately on the radar. If you're from the Northeast check. Yes. All right. Went to, so grew up in Jersey, went to school in Philly was stealing at a young age, as early as uh, middle school, thieving iPads, put you put the date range Ooh. on it. Uh, also, uh, Fun fact was once suspended with Hassan Reddick for getting into some uh, fisticuff action. <laughs> uh, it went deep into it. Turned out it had something potentially uh, to do with some sort of debt. And we cut to modern day, where I very recently listened to him on an interview talk about hitting up the titty bar, throwing <laughs> dollars in the air. Yeah, he's one of those guys who will get penetration. We talked about him earlier. Best offensive lineman on the line, Deion Dawkins. Fat guy doing weird fat guy <laughs> shit. <laughs> you I mean, already honestly, snow. Yeah, you already snow. Uh, he was he was he was a, a guy who hustled uh, sh shoveling snow when he was a kid. I mean, again from DJ Jersey, tendencies. which by the and, way, I did the same thing. I raised, I raised some cash funds when I was a kid uh, shoveling snow. Oh, yeah. I would pay my sister a dollar a driveway. We were getting way more than a dollar a driveway. <laughs> and just remember source. Deion Dawkins also said he would sacrifice all his fingers for Josh Allen, which wow. said you could just chop them all off. He's not afraid to lose in the short Hashtag term, if it means winning in the long term. And, no, uh, no word yet if he enjoys the local newscasts as much as Josh Allen does, though. I, I wonder if uh, included in his fingers is his dick, like Brable. I wonder how <laughs> that's committed a, that's he is. That's how you know he's a true. Uh, and uh, in the YouTube chat, uh, we are getting confirmation that Josh Allen has been seen at a Seneca casino. So look out, Josh. I, I got to sure be you're not betting on the wrong stuff. Josh, only game Josh can figure out is roulette, right? <laughs> I don't want to be mean. I'm just saying. Yeah, you never know. He's he's maybe not an advantage craps player. I wouldn't say. <laughs> All right, so you think he's a sharp. He's a plus EV better. <laughs> if, if Josh had plus him, plus him EV getting <laughs> kicked out for counting cards would be amazing story. Oh, uh, just put that in your profile, Josh. Plus uh, EV better. Kramer and I have the Bills going ten and seven. Kramer likes uh, James Cook over Dalvin Cook rushing yards. Bills Giants Super Bowl one sixty to one over Cook uh, rushing touchdowns over Cook rushing yards. I got under ten and a half wins. Comeback Player of the Year Demar Hamlin and Greg Rousseau long shot two hundred uh, to one. I mean, so I get my bifocals. Yeah, <laughs> Adam. My... Again, we're breaking our machine here, but fourteen and three. Josh Allen over passing yards versus Miami. Rousseau over seven and a half sacks. Gabe Davis. Davis over receiving yards, digs over receiving yards, Super Bowl nine to one, conference five to one, division wins over four and a half, and uh, over ten and a half wins, and over eleven and a half wins. Adam's nominated for fan performance of the year. <laughs> really, really, it's, uh, what, it's not we my do fault. You asked me to record this. Yes, less than twenty four hours after we were in Ohio, where I got a nice three day vacation. From the betting abstinence of North Carolina, <laughs> uh, Adam will be an early nominee for D Jenny uh, <laughs> of the, of the year with the with just going all in. Uh, appreciate Adam calling in. Make sure to follow uh, Adam on X at uh, Adam Pelletier. Got a lot of great stuff coming over at the website sportsgamblingpodcast.com, fantasy football guides, tons of uh, daily MLB that's, picks that's articles. Just Sean. What? You're underselling what we got coming oh, yeah. up. Yeah, here we go. We give got us the, give the, us the trap promo. cheat sheets, PPR, super flex, auction cheat sheet from the one and only old fashioned fantasy football podcast. Divisional previews for the NFL are going up. Picks top to bottom. Daily MLB 
picks, Little League World Series preview yeah, yes. on deck as well. Hashtag from the one and only Noah Bienik. What else do you need, Sean? I need you to get more. You're here. I need you to get here. Up we here. go. There Head we go. Let's go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Hey, download the Game Time app. Uh, new customers, promo code SGPN. Get that twenty dollars off. What else? Oh, obviously Patreon, sportsgamblingpodcast.com. Patreon. Going to be taping the uh, bonus episode here uh, within the week and thousand uh, dollar NFL win totals contest. And of course, we'll see you. At Circus Sports, August 24th through the 26th. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the money green. He's Ryan. OJ no longer a part of the Bills organization. <laughs> Kramer, let it ride.